All right, last time we talked about the downward spiral. Today is kind of, so it's kind of cool for me because my birthday is actually January 2nd. So I get kind of two days to really ponder on the new year and being, you know, now 24. <clears throat> so it's kind of been a really thoughtful last few days for me. Um, I've had a bunch of different thoughts, but I've really been honing in on what makes New Year's resolutions work. What makes your goals stick? Um, <clears throat> I've had so different thoughts. So I want to dive right in. And right now, so the first I want to talk about um, what I call emotional alignment. I believe that nothing in your life happens good until it happens emotionally or spiritually first. Everything is created emotionally and spiritually before it's created physically. Um, as a result, if you want more wealth in your life, the first thing you have to deal with is, okay, not how do I get into Bitcoin or what's the best uh, real estate options out there? It's how do I deal with the crap that's going on inside my own soul and heart and body? And then knowing that it's going to come all the way back around and bless you. So <clears throat> I'll give you a for instance. Um, there was a point, and actually not so long ago, where I really was just making zero money. <laughs> like really wasn't making any money at all. And I said, I want to get into an abundance mentality, right? And I, I said, I want to be wealthy. I don't want to be wealthy. I'm wealthy. But I was like, okay, why do I act like wealth is some forever unattainable idea? It's like it's always out there. It's always tomorrow. It's always one step ahead. It's always in the future. It's always a dream, but it never actually becomes reality. It always is stuck in dream state. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to be wealthy. Like, and I think about it all the time, but I think we get stuck in that, right? So what I did is I said, okay, what would a wealthy person do if he had a lot of money? I said, well, ideally, if I was wealthy and a lot of money... I would purchase opportunities and I'd give like crazy. Because for me, I'm not big into materialism. Like, sure, I like a nice car like everybody else has in a nice house, but I'm, I've tried very, very hard to limit those things because I want to find value in the things that money can't buy. And so I said, okay, what would I really do if I was making, let's say, $100,000 a month? And I was like, oh man, that'd be insane. Like, I could actually buy groceries, you know? Like, you know, just, it was kind of like that crazy thought. I was like, no, like, really, what would I do? It's like, I would give like crazy. That's, that would be what a wealthy Brunson would do would be give like crazy. And so guess what I did? I started giving a fairly substantial amount of my paycheck away. When I was so poor that I'm not joking, I like struggled to buy groceries and I was giving my money away. So the funniest thing happened though, after a couple months of doing this, one, I found that I had a massive abundance mentality because for some reason, money just kept popping up. I give it away and I'm like, oh crap, I'm gonna buy groceries, I'm gonna pay for rent. Then like right before money would pop up. Craziest thing ever, every time this happened. And I'm starting to think, man, like what's going on here? But I got into this really good abundance mentality. I was like, you know what? Money just keeps on showing up. So why am I worried about it? Money just shows up. So why do I care about how much I give? And I gave and I gave and I was very generous, honestly. I'd buy things for my roommate. I'd buy things for my friends. And if I saw someone that needed money, I'd give it to them. I'd look for opportunities. There was one time this lady, I'm not trying to be brag. I'm not trying to brag here at all. I'm just trying to be very honest and open with you guys. But there was a lady that ran out of gas. And I, so what I've been doing is I've been taking a chunk of my paycheck and I'm putting it into a separate bank account. I had a card that went along with that. And so that's what I do. Whenever I saw someone that needed help or ever wanted to give to people that had less than me, and sometimes even those that had maybe even more than me, but were also in maybe tough financial spots. And um, just as, as a way to get out of this scarcity mentality, I'd give. Anyways, going back, I saw this lady. She ran out of gas along the side of the road. I was on my motorcycle. I pull off. I run back over there. I'm like, hey, let me help you get back. I help her push her car into the gas station, which is actually luckily very close. And we get there, and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. And I was like, not a problem. And then she's still like looking for a credit card. I go and I swipe it. I start pumping gas into her car and I just stand there and she's like, Oh my gosh, what are you doing? You don't need to do that. Like, no, seriously, it's fine. And I could just, you could tell by like, just a look at things that they were, they were, in, they were, you know, pretty much at their, at their last straw there a little bit financially. And, and you know, she wasn't, and it wasn't like one of those giving experiences where she was like crying, like, Oh my gosh, like you say it was no. In fact, she was just like, oh, I was like, yeah, cool. You know, like a little bit embarrassed about it first and like kind of didn't worry about it a whole lot. And, and but for me, it did so much for me. It really, it was like life changing for me because I, as I sit there pumping her gas, I was like, man, this is cool. And the craziest thing is that was the moment. I think it was a few weeks after that, that everything began to change. Literally everything in my life began to change for the better, um, especially financially. And I have not really had much financial concern at all since then. And now is that directly correlated? Maybe not, but I think it is. I think that once I let go of the fear of money and felt like that 
once the grip started loosening on me, it really changed everything. So what I recommend to all of you guys is give abundantly when you're poor. Because I'll tell you what, the funny thing is the more money that I make, the harder it is to give. That sounds nutty, but it's so true. For me, maybe it's different for other people, but for me, it's been genuinely that way that the more money that I've made, it's been like, oh man, but I could invest this. I could put this here, I could put this here. Like All of a sudden, all these needs stop popping up that you never had before which is why I'm trying so hard to be very careful about materialism because I think it's really a dangerous thing. But um, I digress. That is number one. Learn how to deal with emotions. That's the key. So going back, this is a few principles we're talking about for New Year's resolutions, for setting goals. Learn to deal with your emotions first. Learn to deal with what emotionally is going on and learn to fix it. If you're, you know, my friend once told me that I had a good friend I was talking to not long ago and she said, you know, I really wanted to find an amazing guy in my life. And so I was like, you know what? It, just, it was always just so elusive to me, though. It was like, oh, yeah, that, that guy that you always want, he's always just one step away. So she's like, you know what I decided to do? I just sat down and said, you know what? I already have him. And she's like, I went there emotionally, and I healed what was hurting emotionally. And I said, you know what? I already have him. Stop worrying about it. He's already here. She's like, I kind of created him in my mind in a, in a weird way. Like, I just went there, and I kind of just put myself, and I literally convinced myself subconsciously that I already had the guy, that he was already there, that I didn't need to worry about it anymore, that he was already present in my life. Two days later, she met a guy that she was just head over heels for, and things have been going very well last I talked with with them, Um, and they're progressing really well towards where they want to be. That is another great example of dealing with your emotions first. So when you have a big goal, like, oh man, I just want to make an extra $100,000 this year, (laughs) maybe even an extra $1,000 this year, it doesn't matter. Deal with the emotions. Everything is an emotional problem, really, which is why the next book on self-help is not going to really help you. You go read Marcus Aurelius's like philosophies or really about anything because these people have already learned to deal with their emotions. If you can deal with the emotional side, you can deal with everything else. I should say emotional and spiritual. Those two are very connected in my mind. Emotional and spiritual. If you can fix those things inside your heart, you will become a magnet for wealth. You become a magnet for good relationships. You become a magnet for everything in your life that you're missing right now. Um, it's kind of an inside-out approach, but I promise you it's got amazing power. It really works. Going back into reading more books... This is the concept of the eternal student that is very, very dangerous. And I have been caught in it many times. What we like to do is we often think, oh, like, I actually was talking to a buddy just recently. So my friends, because I'm this way, right? Like, and you guys are probably realize my friends come to me with pretty much their problems. Like, that's pretty common. Like, hey, or like when they want to like change their life or when they've got big goals, because I'm the guy they bounce ideas off of. And I help them rationalize them a little bit sometimes. So it's been awesome for me. I think that they find good value in it. It's been a really cool thing. So here's kind of what, here's kind of what went down. My buddy was like, hey, I'm going to try to read a book per week this year. I was like, okay, what do you normally read? He's like, ah, oh, like, I don't know, I read like two books last year, three books. I'm like, okay, cool. Why a book per week? Because I just really want to get all the information out there. And I'm like, okay. I think you're better off. I told him this. I looked him, I looked him in the eyes. I was like, I think you were better off reading one book this year and actually applying it than reading 50 and not applying it. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll apply it. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm talking about really applying it. I read a lot. I read more than almost anyone I know that's my age. In fact, I read more than almost anyone that I know, period. And I'll tell you right now, It takes me about a month to get through a good book. Maybe even a few months. Seven Habits I've been working on for a very long time. I mean, I've read it before, but it's so hard because for me, I don't like to keep reading until I've applied what I learned. Let me say this again. Do not keep reading until you're applying what you already learned before. Information is not that new. The stuff that's really going to change your life out there, it's not that new. You can go back 100 years and you're going to find much of the same content that you need to change your life that you can find right now. So the new book is not the answer, I promise you. There might be some cool new books out there, and I'm, I'm not discounting that they have power, but they're really teaching things that have been taught for hundreds and hundreds of years, probably thousands of years, because the things that are really going to change your life are dealing with your emotional difficulties and your spiritual difficulties, dealing with the things inside the soul. And that's been a problem since time. <laughs> since people were created... We literally have been dealing with emotions. That's been our greatest limitation. So get a book that is a timeless classic and read that very slowly. And when you learn something that's like, oh, that's what I need to do, stop reading. Go out and apply it. Start putting it into your life. And when you feel like, okay, I've really started applying this in my life, then keep reading. If you do that and you keep doing that, it will change your life faster than reading a book a day. I, I think there's this weird there's this weird culture. I'm the same way about traveling. People are like, oh, how many countries have you been to? Oh, I've been to 78. Holy smokes, I've been to 36. Like, for me, it's about it's about quality, not quantity. I've only been to a few countries, but I'll tell you what, 
the countries that I've been to, well, for the most part, I really know them. I really, I've been there. I have friends there. I know the culture. I know the language. That's what it's like to me. A book's the same way. Get to know the culture, the language, the, the ins and the outs of it. Really understand the book and live it. Don't just go and visit it. Live in it. Apply it deeply. If you have to stop in the middle of a sentence, I don't care. When you get an aha moment, that's a great time to just stop. Go and apply it before you come back. So, I'll get off that horse <laughs> for a second. Um, that's that's the second thing. Number three. Um, hold on, let me go back. I had this in my mind and just, I, I'm so ADHD, I can't even keep track sometimes. Number three thing for keeping and setting goals. Oh, yes, yes. Surrounding yourself with friends. Right? Okay, so let's, let's go back. Emotional issues was number one. Number two was being the eternal student. Avoid that. Learn to apply quickly. Number three, get around people that are going to inspire you. I once heard a quote and it said, motivation sucks. And I loved it. It's so true. People are like, I need more motivation, more motivation. That is bull crap, guys. <laughs> don't, you don't need more motivation. I promise you. What you need to do is kind of pony up and, and learn to deal with things. Now, and I, now, sorry, let me go back a little bit. When I say pony up, I mean like, don't wait for the feel goods to start acting. Don't wait for the planets to align to start acting. Just get it done. Just start doing. Now, what's the hardest thing about doing? Often, you just don't have the strength. Some people are like, you just need to do it. And I'm like, okay, but sometimes you just can't. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just don't, you just don't have the strength inside to do it. And the worst thing someone tell you is, well, just buck up and do it sometimes, right? You know, but here, here's where the tribe element comes in. If you're having a really crappy day and you're just like, man, I just can't go forward with this. I just can't go to the gym today. Man, I just can't. I just can't keep doing these nightly routines. I'm just, I just want a party night or whatever it is, right? You go to your, your, when you're around people that inspire you that are working together for a similar goal, you will find unbelievable strength. It's really incredibly powerful. Get around people that inspire you. Now, if they don't live close to you, that's okay. I have friends that I talk to that literally live in other countries. And I say, hey, man, I'm down today. Really, what's going on, Brunson? Okay, man, I'm just like, I'm not sticking to these goals. I'm struggling. What do I do? And as they talk me through it, we both benefit. Because he gets strength from talking to me, and I get strength from hearing him. And then the roles reverse sometimes. He's like, hey, Brunson, what's going on? I think the biggest reason, no, I think one of the biggest reasons that I have maintained really good goal um, progression is because people ask me about my goals all the time. People ask me for advice all the time. They're like, hey, what do I do about my goals? How do I set good resolutions? How do I like, how to avoid pitfalls? How do I avoid down roll spirals? Like, what do I do? And as I discuss with them, I find incredible strength. So give your friends an opportunity to find that strength. And then they'll come to you and say, hey, man, I'm really burnt out. You don't have to the answers. You just have to be there for them. Hey, listen, man, I know it's rough right now. Just think about it. What do you really want? I don't know, man. I really just want, I want an amazing family. I want, a, I want to be financially free. I want to be healthy again. I want to be in good shape. All right, man, think about that for a second. Is it worth going to the gym today? Don't think about tomorrow. Just go to the gym today. Like that kind of a conversation, it will inspire you. It will inspire them. I love the quote, I lift thee and thou lift me and we'll ascend together, right? As you lift others, they will lift you. It's not, it's not a race. If you ever get in that competitive, like I got to beat up my friends and be more successful than them, then guys, sorry, you're screwed in more ways than I can count. The best way to get really successful is to help your friends get successful too. I promise you. It is the best way. Not to try to beat them out and make them all feel jealous. Because a lot of times we're like that. We're, ego we're, we're egotistical people. Like, I'm not going to deny that for a second. I got a massive oh, ego sometimes. And it comes out. And it's a big, like, it's a massive difficulty dealing with that. But at the end of the day, the best way to be successful is to make your friends successful as well. Now, you can't wait for them to get their crap together all the time, right? You have to keep moving forward. But it's amazing the power it has to look at your friends and say, Hey, I have some big goals. What are you thinking about this year? Like, oh, I also, you know, I really want to make some changes too. Okay, cool. Let's do it together, man. Be the ringleader. Don't be the know it all. Don't be the guru. Just be the guy that is, keeps the fire going. It's, there's a lot of power in it. And if you're lucky, you've got a friend that's doing that already for you. Embrace that and enjoy that for as long as you have it. Friends that inspire you and that push you and go, hey man, how's the goals? How's it going? What's going on right now? If you don't have a friend like that, then be that friend. Anyways, I'll get off that as well. So, I'll probably have a bunch more of these come to my mind, but those ones I was talking about today with some friends and some family, and we were just discussing why some of these, like what's the best way to keep your goals going strong. Number one, focus on emotions. Focus on the internal, not the external first. 
Number two, don't be the eternal student. Learn to apply things before you can keep going. And number three, get around people that inspire you. Um, there's so many different elements to what makes it successful. Keep listening to my podcast. I, I talk about this stuff all the time. Obviously, I just love this. I love it. I love talking about it. I'm passionate about it because I am a huge believer in people. I believe people are so capable of becoming amazing. They just need the right pieces. Really, it's the principles. Once you understand the principles, you're good to go. So dig in, guys. Go out there. Make it happen. Make 2020 an amazing year for you. Um, Love to hear your thoughts. You can look me up on Instagram, really wherever. And and uh, And I'd love to answer any of your questions that I can. So best of luck out there. God bless.